Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at how to build the new Creality Ender 2 Pro. Now, this machine, I already did a video showing uh, print results. I'm doing these a little out of order. Um, I wanted to show, before you built yours, the mods that I had done to mine specifically to turn it into a miniatures printer for D&D miniatures and stuff. I'm going to link that video in the uh, video description, and I'll put a link here on screen here now. Um, so why don't we just dive into it and see what's in the box here. So going through this, uh, it's the standard package of free filament and uh, tools. You get your standard Creality spool holder. It's a bayonet lug. Um, it's a nice swivel arm for it, so you can tilt it out of the way when not using it. Uh, let's see what's under here. Oh, that's the LCD screen. Uh, it's like the original Ender 2 uh, design. It's got a push button knob. Uh, power cord. Let's pull this off. And okay, the uh, Z and X axis assembly here is already pre assembled and it's wired to the base, so don't yank this out. You'll pull those wires. Um, Okay, so this is great. Uh, that's going to have to all be lifted out as one assembly, even though it's not attached because the wiring is attached. They did away with that uh, 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 connector in the back like you had on the original Ender 3s for the uh, power cables. Just go ahead and pull this out. Okay, all that's left is, it uh, looks like it comes with a handle for the top of the axis. Okay, I'm going to use the foam packaging, um, set this on it, um, this will make it easier for uh, getting access to the, uh, the screws underneath it and the springs under the bed. I'm going to go ahead and replace the stock springs uh, on this, but first I'm going to open it up uh, on the bottom and just make sure all of the wiring is connected correctly. Creality has a very bad habit of tinning the ends of the wires uh, for the power uh, cables and that can actually cause them to come loose because you shouldn't put uh, solder on the ends of the wires. Solder is never really totally solid. Um, it will flow under pressure and that can loosen it so uh, it's a good idea to go under here um, pull the two rubber feet off like I've done and take out all the screws and then you're going to use the screwdriver that came with the machine to tighten up uh, the screws on the attachment points. Okay, pull this off. The board is a 4.2.3 board. Hey, if you look in the upper left hand corner, you're going to see that there are two grounding wires attaching there. One is for the PSU. The other, and this is new, is running up to the heat sink on the hot end. And they are doing this, I am guessing they are doing this to discharge static electricity in the hot end, but uh, this is the first Creality printer I've ever had where they've done this. Okay, so we're gonna tighten up these screws here. Just make sure they're nice and tight. The wires are inserted and the screws are tight. And that way you don't have any problems uh, uh, with the cabling. If you're good at stripping wires, uh, you can always go in and cut off those tinned ends and restrip the wires and reinsert and reattach them. Uh, tightening in it for now should be just fine for you though. Um, go back in. We're going to put the screws back on the bottom and replace the two rubber feet. Okay, let's get this flip back over and we'll take a look at this. I think the next thing I want to do um, before I get to replacing the springs on this is I'm going to check the eccentric nuts on the wheels. Now I am going to link above here. If you look at the top of your screen, there's going to be a pop-up link that comes up for the section in, um, my, uh, uh, Ender 3 V2 Pro video where I discuss how to tune eccentric nuts. I'm not going to repeat that here. Just go check that out in that video and make sure your eccentrics are not too tight. If they're too tight, they're going to cause uh, the wheels to get excessive wear and to flatten on you, and that will cause them to wear out over time. 
Um, if you do it right now and take an extra five minutes to do this, they will last an extremely long time. I've still got my original Ender 3. Uh, it's probably about three and a half plus years old at this point, probably getting close to four years. And it's still got, got the original wheels on it. And um, that's because I've got them properly tuned. They're not too tight. And there's just no wear on them then. So take a few minutes and get this done uh, like I show in that video. Next up, we're going to remove the four red leveling wheels uh, below the bed. Just unscrew those. And once they're off, you're going to lift up the bed and be very careful on this back left one. You don't want to mess around with that wire harness very much to where it could break the solder connections. So just be very careful. Gently lower that strain relief uh, guide off of the... Um, uh, screw and pull the spring off so just just like that pull that spring off and then you're going to use the uh, yellow die compression springs like I've got linked in the video description put on under that one guide it back over the screw and then you can put this back in place just guide it down or if you want to go ahead and put the rear spring uh, on the opposite side and then place the bed back on the um, mount that attaches it to the y-axis and then you can just one at a time put the springs on the front ones and just fit it over the screw and then put the screw back through the hole through the uh, base mount okay once you've got your springs uh, uh, in place then go ahead and reattach your bed leveling wheels uh, you want to compress these springs about halfway down or a little more at this point um, and that way you've got plenty of room for doing leveling later once the printer is built okay right now I'm gonna put on the front two screws these are M4 by 16s there's two of them that go in through the front mount on the base and insert into the vertical extrusion that holds the Z and X axis and just insert those speed this up here now once again we're going to use our foam to set the printer on so nothing gets damaged we're going to flip it over on its side and at this point through the bottom of the z-axis extrusion you're going to use your m5 by 45 bolts these are a lot longer a lot bigger and put those through the bottom um, get those in there once they're in make sure all four screws for this assembly are nice and tight Hey, uh, the spool holder is just a bayonet lug, so just put that into the arm and twist. Okay, once that's in place, insert the M5 by 40 screw and tighten that down. Uh, this swivel arm can then turn uh, out to the side when in use, and you can rotate it to the back of the printer when you're not printing to save on space a little bit. Next up, we're going to put the handle in place. This is uh, an M5 by 14, two screws. They go through the top here. Uh, get that on. Get those hunkered down nice and tight. Last thing you're going to do is attach the cabling for the Z-axis motor and the Z-axis end stop. Each of these uh, connectors are different sizes, so you can't mix them up. Just get them in nice and tight they'll clip in place finally we're going to take the LCD connector uh, ribbon cable and insert that into the port on the back of the LCD assembly get that in nice and tight the LCD uh, doesn't use any screws it's just a slot fit on the side of the base of the printer so just insert that and slide it down at an angle and that'll get it mounted plug in your power cable Finally, we're going to tension the belts a little bit. You want them nice and tight. You don't want them so tight that they are stretched, and you don't want them so loose that there's uh, any sag in them. You want them tight to where you can push on with your finger and they instantly spring back uh, into place. So, like I said, you just you want them tight, but not too tight, and it's just something you're going to have to get a feel for. Now, on the top of the x-axis assembly there are these two screws on either side of the z-axis uh, guide screw you want to tighten these up 
and then loosen them two full turns and leave them like that. This is essential for getting really smooth operation on your Z-axis. Trust me on this, it'll reduce ringing and stuff on your prints. Okay, you're going to loosen the screw on the Z-axis limit switch, then lower it as far as it will go, then lower your Z-axis and X-axis assembly down to where it's the nozzle is just touching the bed. Now remember, you have the springs already compressed about halfway. We did that back when we put the springs on. So you're going to put a piece of paper under the nozzle. Using the coupler on the Z-axis motor, you're going to turn it by hand and lower that nozzle until it's just touching the paper. Now we're going to go in and slide the Z-axis limit switch up until you hear it click. Once it clicks, you're going to hold it in place and tighten that screw up. Keep this nice and level. You want it as close to vertical as you can. When you hear that click, hold it in place and tighten the screw. You want to get the screw really tight. Um, this is a steel screw going into a steel T-nut, so you don't have to worry about over tightening it and stripping it. Get this one tight because it does get under a lot of pressure when that Z-axis drops on it. Okay, finally, we're going to make sure if you're in the United States, switch this to 115 volt. You do not want it on 230. And finally, we are going to turn on the power switch, see if the LCD pops on, and it does. Now, to test your machine, you go into the LCD menu, go to Motion, and Auto Home. And you should see the printer move on all three axes. First axis will be the x-axis. It will slide on the y-axis, and then it will drop the x-axis assembly down along the z-axis until it hits that limit switch that you just adjusted. And if it does all that, congratulations, you've assembled your printer correctly. Now, I have a full video that goes into a lot more depth on how to manually level your bed. I'll link that at the top here and in the video description. Uh, but just for a quick review, uh, if you want to level it real quick, once you've auto-homed, go in the LCD menu, go down to Disable Steppers. Uh, where then I'm using a post-it note, any piece of paper will do. We're just testing for getting that nozzle uh and the bed leveled to the point where the nozzle is just touching the paper and the paper has a little resistance when you slide it around so what i'm going to do is put the nozzle in each of the four corners and i'm going to rub the paper and adjust the screws on the bottom of the bed the bed leveling wheels the red ones until the nozzle is just kind of catching on the paper you don't want it so tight that the paper can't move, but you do want to feel the paper snagging on the nozzle some. So just adjust those. If you're looking from the top down, the wheel will rotate clockwise to raise the bed and counterclockwise to lower it. So just get those four corners done. Um, I also have uh, bed leveling squares that you can print. These are linked or attached to my Cura profile that's linked in the video description. Uh, it will print that you can print those out then to do final uh, tuning. Um, one thing I use on all of my printers, you don't have to do this, I just use it as a convenience issue, is I use a full size SD card adapter. I plug that into the front of the machine. Uh, that way, I'm not putting stress on the micro SD slot um, that can come unsoldered from the board and create problems for you. This way, um, I'm not messing with this ever i'm just messing with the adapter it's cheap they're like five or six bucks on amazon okay i'm going to go in to the motion control menu i'm going to move axis on the z-axis i'm going to move it up a little bit just i put in a, about a 180 millimeters here and it's going to cause that to slide up once that's done i'm going to set it to preheat the pla and we're going to try inserting some filament here i'm going to clip the end of the filament depress the lever on the extruder and feed the filament in. Now, sometimes the filament will hit the edge of the coupler that holds the Bowden tube to the extruder. And what I do is I just finger tighten this coupler because it happens all the time to me and I'm always taking it off. Uh, but it makes feeding filament easier. You just unscrew that coupler and it will feed through better or it'll feed through a lot easier now. And then you just slide the coupler and tube over the filament and tighten it back up. And that just makes it a little bit easier to get in there.
push filament in until it begins coming out the nozzle. Now feed the filament through the Bowden tube until you feel a little resistance that's it hitting the melt chamber. Keep pushing until filament starts coming out the nozzle. So once you've done that, you can download the, my bed leveling squares. They're attached in the uh, with the Cure Profiles. Uh, link is in the video description. Go ahead and print those out, and that'll help you get uh, your bed leveling fine-tuned. Now, if you want to see uh, all of my tips for how to really fine-tune this printer and how to get super detailed quality miniatures like you're seeing here, uh, go check out my video on how I converted my Ender 2 Pro into a dedicated miniatures printer. And I've linked that up above here, and it's also linked in this video description. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Please click that subscribe button.